There is no doubt that the Italians knew about wine, so much so that they thought that if they put a wine barrel on the wing, they would be able to surpass the aircraft of their time. This goofy-looking flying barrel is not a cartoon aircraft made up out of thin air, but an Italian engineer's design for a high-speed aircraft that transcends the times. Despite its chubby appearance, every detail is no joke, and the designer's efforts are still evident everywhere. A wind wine barrel, the Caproni Taletto Stipa, what kind of wine does it contain? The peace period between the two world wars was a golden age in the history of human aviation, when aircraft designers were less engineers and more artists, driven by passion, creativity, and a far from fixed mindset, to shape their ideal aircraft as they saw fit. In 193X, as the internal combustion engine continued to evolve, Luigi Stipa, an engineer at Caproni Aerotech in Italy, was keenly aware that the development of the aircraft had reached a bottleneck at this time, and that although the engine power was increasing, the increase in flight speed was really limited and the two were not moving at the same pace. When the power level was increased from 1000 to 2000 HP, it was not too difficult to get the aircraft close to 700 km h. However, when the power level was increased again from 2000 to 300 HP, it was impossible to break 800 km h. The engine clearly felt out of power. So what was the problem? After wind tunnel tests and theoretical calculations, Stipa discovered that the propeller itself was at the heart of the problem. When the aircraft reached 800 km per hour, the propeller tip was already approaching the speed of sound, causing a dramatic drop in efficiency and consequently in thrust. In addition, the large windward area of the propeller brought with it a high level of drag. And the higher you fly, the thinner the atmosphere becomes and the power of the piston engine drops dramatically. The combination of these factors made the piston engine plus propeller propulsion model, which had been used since the birth of the aircraft, a bottleneck, and no wonder that René Leduc, the grandfather of the ramjet engine we talked about in the last issue, said that the propeller was a bad design and that a whole new propulsion system had to be developed in order to fly faster. Now, of course, you'd have to go to jet power to solve the problem. But at the time Whitley's proposal for a centrifugal jet engine was still a joke that struck people as whimsical at the time, so all Luigi Stipa could think of was to play around with the airframe design. As an engineer, he was familiar with Bernoulli's principle, where the speed of a fluid increases as the diameter of the tube shrinks. Following this law, wouldn't it be possible to obtain a higher flow velocity by simply turning the fuselage into a cylinder, cutting the propeller short and moving it into the belly of the aircraft to push the airflow backwards? The high-speed airflow inside the tube would also drag the lower-speed airflow outside, generating at least 50% extra thrust. And by encasing the propeller in a duct, the propulsion efficiency is increased despite the reduced size. 120% of the thrust of a full-size propeller can be achieved by using only half the diameter of the propeller in the duct. It also reduces noise and improves safety. What's more, the large duct, which at this point becomes a circular wing, generates lift itself. Although the aircraft thus designed looked odd, the more one thought about it, the more appropriate it seemed from a theoretical point of view. The prototype of this concept, which came to be known as culvert propulsion power, actually came from Stipa's design. With his design in mind, Stipa applied to the then Mussolini government for its development. And the ebullient Mussolini immediately opened his pockets to this avant-garde and radical design and immediately instructed the Italian Air Ministry to sign a contract with Stipa's proprietor, Caproni Aerotech, to develop and build a prototype. In March 1932, the big fat kid from Stipa stepped off the assembly rack from Caproni's workshop. This guy took culvert construction to the extreme, the whole fuselage being a huge culvert wrapped around a piston propeller engine. With the propulsion air flowing directly through the fuselage and out the tail, the shape of the culvert was carefully optimized to take account of Bernoulli's principle and the density of the airflow at high speed, resulting in an expansive front-to-back configuration with a converging center, which was hammered together by hand in two-thirds of the time taken to manufacture the aircraft. In order to preserve the integrity of the culverts, two pilots had to ride on this tonneau. To emphasize the speed of the aircraft, the whole thing was also painted in a cool light blue and cream color, like the racing cars of the time. As the culverts themselves were capable of generating lift, Stipa fitted the aircraft with just one cantilevered center monoplane. Not forgetting that this was quite an advanced design in the days of biplanes. On June 5, 1932, Taliedo Stipa took to the runway under a crowd of loving eyes. A test flight confirmed that Tipa's idea was not a pipe dream and that the tonneau could indeed fly. But the maximum speed was a miserable 68 km per hour, far below the desired target, and compared to a biplane with the same 120 horsepower, gypsy, piston engine, you could say it had improved. But it really had not improved much. The reason for this is that the engine is so underpowered that the airflow into the culvert always hovers at low speeds, and the shape of the Stipa barrel is optimized for high-speed airflow, further weakening the weak thrust. In addition, the Stipa tonneau is very stable in flight, 
a little too stable to require significant effort to maneuver and steer, but due to the special characteristics of the culvert airframe structure and the large diameter of the culverts, changes in the angle of approach not only cause turbulence in the fan intake, but also cause local stalls, resulting in changes in the lift distribution of the airframe. Either it does not move or it is dangerous to move, not only is it unresponsive but also difficult to maneuver. After many test flights, Stipa had to accept these disappointing results. And his tonneau design, which had no real advantages over its contemporaries, was not a success. But Stipa was convinced that the culvert power system was the right way to go and he patented his design in Italy, the USA, and Germany. The owner, Caproni, was not willing to let his investment go to waste and, after optimizing the development of the culvert power, the result was a very real toss-up of a peculiar jet engine that came close to being certified as the world's first jet, which is also a funny story with an Italian twist. This is also a funny story with an Italian style, we'll talk about it separately later, if you like it, remember to like the comments to tell me. Thanks for your support, follow me, bring you interesting technology stories, we'll see you next time.